Hey, this is Tom. I just wanted to jump in here real quick before we got things started. So, just a warning. During the early parts of recording this episode, we were experiencing some major technical difficulties. Uh, we do manage to get things sorted out by the interspersal. Unfortunately, the audio for one of our guest hosts, Wink, is a bit rough to listen to in the first half. I did my best to clean things up as I could, but you know what they say, you can plan a pretty podcast, but you can't predict the technical difficulties. That said, please do not let this diminish your enjoyment of this episode. Our guests from the Shattered Order podcast were incredible, and it was incredibly fun to have them on, and we're certain that you're going to enjoy things as much as we did, if not more. And from our side as well, we recommend that you give their podcast a listen to when you can. And to wink from one editor to another, I appreciate your patience and apologize for the inconvenience. It was a blast having another editor on. That said, I leave you with this the last episode of this journey thank you for listening and as always good luck disclaimer please check your playback settings ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed unless you want us to sound drunk then play at half speed thank you oh my god oh my god oh my god Jesus oh my god god josh calm down you're giving me anxiety now nigel what the hell's his deal uh the boss finally landed us legit guests for the podcast Holy shit, no kidding. So, like, we got another movie podcast coming on? Awesome. No, it's um, it's a Star Wars game. I think it's called the Fractured Border Podcast or something. Shattered Order. These guys are huge. Their Discord server, the member list, has a scroll bar. Holy shit, a scroll bar? Oh my, okay, now I'm nervous. Ooh, boy. Okay, here they come, here they come. Don't embarrass me. Hello, everybody. I just peed a little. Hmm, (laughs) not bad. I've seen much worse, but I I think we can work with this. Oh, hey guys, I'm Wink. I'm Goodnight Punk. It's them. Hi, hi, hey, um, hi. Um, thanks for uh, here being. Um, I'm Josh. Thank you for um on being on. I'm a big fan. Hi. (laughs) And since Josh has gone out to lunch and isn't going to introduce us clearly, I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. And I'm Dan. Nice meeting you. So, uh, Josh tells us your podcast is called Shattered Order? So what's that about? Like, what's your guys' shtick? Yeah, our podcast is called the Shattered Order Podcast, and we're a podcast about the Star Wars game Galaxy of Heroes. It's a mobile game, which is kind of cool, so you can, like, play it anywhere, which is great. Um, you know, and it's kind of a turn-based strategy game, collect characters and that sort of stuff really fun but we're looking to expand though and you know i think this is a pretty good space wait um good space yeah so uh our podcast goes all over the game strategies tips big tips uh theory crafting all that kind of stuff Movies are definitely unexplored territory for us, but uh, I know that we're going to do great on this. Oh, yes, indeed. But first, we're going to need to clear out that area over there. Yeah, that's, that's probably good. And then, <laughs> then we can... <laughs> did, did I miss a joke? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused, too. And not to be rude, um, what the hell are you guys talking about? Oh, it's nothing, really. Uh, well, nothing for us, but we're going to go ahead and just... Take over this podcast. Awesome! Oh, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna do a freaking weekly podcast with you guys. I'm so Wait, stoked. What, what? No, no! You're, you're just supposed to be our guests! Josh! Uh, we're altering the deal. Pray we don't alter it further. <laughs> <sighs> this deal's getting worse all the time, and it started out pretty shitty. All right, I'll tell you what. We'll play you guys in a game of Galaxy of Heroes. You guys win and we'll leave. I am totally okay with this. Okay, fine. But we pick the settings. Nigel! Computer? Load program. Galaxy of Heroes. Wait. Is that John Williams? Tom, can we afford John Williams? Shit, you're right. Hang on. Ah, Star Wars! Nothing but Star Wars! 
Uh, what's, what's, what's going, going on? on? Welcome to the Fire Pit Holodeck. What better way to play a game than to be in the game? A holodeck? This is a Star Wars. Seems like you're mixing your sci-fi. The joke only works if you don't overthink it. I thought this was a movie podcast. This isn't just a movie podcast. This is the Fire Pit. We experience movies. He's right, though. We should watch a movie first. Yeah, yeah let's watch, watch a movie. movie. What the hell are you doing? What? Uh, it, it's our transition. Yeah, it's how we move on to the next segment. Kind of like, you know, your guys' sounders. Yeah, well, we'll be cutting that out. Ooh, you guys should do it this week. I've got a bad feeling. Just just stick to the script, guys. Yeah, let's, let's watch, watch a, a movie, movie guys. guys. Fifty-fifth episode of the Fire Pit Podcast. Ah, uh, giggity! And I was totally expecting you to say Shattered Order when you were saying that. So when you said Fire Pit, <laughs> I was like, "Wait, something's wrong." I got I'm like, you. "Oh wait, no, he's on our podcast now." <laughs> I'm a professional. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Anywho, good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Josh, bounty hunter named Clutzo Tripped, and it is a dark time for the rebellion. As we have reached the system, located the rebel base, and begun final preparations for a service attack. That's right, folks. We're at the end of the first journey of Season 2, and we have gone all out, as you heard earlier in my introduction. But as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on over to this one. But before I turn things over to Dan, who's going to tell us who we're watching and what we're watching, I would like to introduce our special guests. Hello. Um, Hello I am there. Wink, and you are? And I'm Goodnight Punk. And we are from the Shadow Order podcast. Uh, we do a weekly podcast covering Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, which is a mobile turn-based strategy game, and it's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a lot of years. I think we are about 55% of the way to episode 300. We're on episode 240 <laughs> this coming week, so uh, we've been doing it quite a while. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Wow, three, holy cow. I would try to do the math, but I'm terrible at it. So. <laughs> hey! hey. That by 52, and then you can tell how many years. We before. really are, we really are two Dan's, because I'm terrible at math, too. <laughs> That's the running gag on our podcast. Oh, the math. <laughs> every right? time, every time I try to do math, it comes out wrong. Yeah, I, and then I, I hear about it for an entire week until we do the next episode, and everyone forgets. And then I try to do another math problem, and then I get it for another week. It's great. Yeah, I think during one time during introductions, I introduced a movie from like 1992, and I was like, I can't believe this movie's 10 years old. And Josh, like, it's more than 20. Wait, what? No, that was uh, that was our Prince of Thieves. Oh yeah, like, Dan, Dan, this episode, this movie is thirty years old. Yeah, that yeah. kid on screen yeah. is forty years old right now. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> movie's twenty five years old. It's thirty. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Dan here, Jedi name can't do it. And uh, last week we watched Mark Hamill play a bad cop bounty hunter something alongside Bill Paxton in Slipstream. It was well, it was a movie. To Mark Hamill's credit, he played against type and he gave it his best. 
Um, but what type was he playing against, you ask? Well, his most famous role that we'll see tonight as Mark Hamill returns as Luke Skywalker in 1980's The Empire Strikes Back, the sequel to the mm, moderate success 1977's Star Wars. It also stars Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Billy D. Williams, and James Earl Jones as the voice of Darth Vader, commonly and correctly called one of the best sequels of all time, and it's also usually unanimously agreed on as the best Star Wars film in the franchise. But not to give us a little bit of a rundown of what we can expect going into this film, I'll turn the mic over to Tom. Oh, thank you, Dan. Tom here, Sith name Doth Stupidious. And as mentioned, we are watching The Empire Strikes Back, or Star Wars Episode Five, as it retroactively became known as, as more movies in the franchise were made. Uh, 20 or so at this point, and more to come. This is a horse that Disney will refuse to stop beating. But who can blame them? With the release date of May 21, 1980, this has a runtime of 124 minutes, uh, the budget was $33 million, which was not small for its time. But the math on the box office, I think we can all agree, is um, this film was well worth the investment. It made uh, $550 million in the box office, and the percentages also still stack. Rotten Tomato has this as a 94%, and IMDb has this as a 9 out of 10, both of which are really hard to find on both both of those sites to have that many people agree at how good a film is. Is this the highest r uh, rated film that we've watched on this podcast? No, I still think that's um, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Oh yeah. That was in the, in the mid nineties. Great movie. It's, it's hard to top that film. I mean, that that's just a great movie, but so was this film considering it was following up the star Wars, but we'll discuss more of that for now. I'd like to get a little meta about this team. So welcome to Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Tagline, the Star Wars saga continues. Dot, dot, dot. Description, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Chewbacca face attack by the Imperial forces and its at, -AT walkers on the ice planet Hoth. While Han and Leia escape in the Millennium Falcon, Luke travels to Dagobah in search of Yoda. Only with the Jedi Master's help will Luke survive when the dark side of the Force beckons him into the ultimate duel with Darth Vader. Now, Star Wars at this point is a stitched into the American identity as Superman and Apple Pie, so pretty much everything I'm going to bring up is rote. There have been documentaries and documentaries on the documentaries of this film, but for those few who are new to the franchise, welcome aboard. What we have here is a follow-up to the sci-fi fantasy blockbuster Star Wars, which itself was a major throwback to 1940s-style serial adventures like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, where the bad guys are bad, the good guys are good, the stakes are galactic, and the heroes always win in the end. And because this is a sequel, you better believe that the stakes are even higher. Now, pretty much everyone from the first one is back for this sequel. So no surprises in terms of that, but there are a few notable additions which we'll go into. Uh, we'll start with the returning big three, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford. Uh, Mark Hamill plays Luke Skywalker, the titular hero of the quest. To this point, Hamill's career had been in TV and TV movies like Sarah T, Portrait of a Teenage Alcoholic. And his biggest role before Star Wars was actually a voice actor in the Bakshi animated classic Wizards, which if you haven't seen it, great movie. But here, Mark Hamill plays Luke again, no longer the wide-eyed country bumpkin, but still as heroic as he was. So nothing new in that portrayal. With them, of course, Carrie Fisher playing Princess Leia. Uh, she was known for playing girlfriend or crazy girlfriend types both before this and then after. And then later she just wound up playing Carrie Fisher. But she was professionally trained. Uh, she's the daughter of Debbie Reynolds. She had experience in Broadway. She was enrolled at the London Central School of Speech and Drama. Yeah, so she had the most experience of all of them. And here she comes back as Princess Leia, where she again gets to be the damsel in distress and potential love interest. And finally, there's Harrison Ford as the rogue wildcard Han Solo, who would arguably go on to have the biggest career of the three, 
Indiana Jones, Blade Runner, enough said. But he actually had a pretty decent career before this. The myth is that uh, he was a carpenter before all this, but that's technically not true. He'd actually trained to be an actor, but he was carpenting on the side. So those three, we know what we're going to get out of. They're still playing their characters. Very familiar if you've seen the first Star Wars. Uh, for the villains, you have James Earl Jones returning as the voice of Darth Vader. He's considered one of the greatest actors in American history. We on the podcast know him for his standout role in the movie Swashbuckler. Seriously, don't watch that movie, but go listen to the episode where we did watch it. Uh, but <laughs> We watched it so you don't have to. Yes, but most people would know him as uh, Mufasa from The Lion King. But the new additions to this, we have Billy D. Williams. This guy had a pretty decent career before this. Lady Sings the Blues, Brian's Song, Mahogany. So he comes in as a swarthy, piratey kind of guy. In front of the camera, they add, they don't subtract, but what really makes this film different from the first one is behind the scenes. In the first Star Wars, George Lucas wrote and directed this. For this one, he came up with the story. But we have a whole new writing and directing group, starting with the director, Irvin Kirshner, who had films uh, up to this point, The Flim Flam Man, Up the Sandbox, and Spies. All crimes, actions, and comedy films. No sci-fi in his resume whatsoever. So with the exception of The Eyes of Lore, but that's like a weird kind of sci-fi. And for the writing team, we have Leigh Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan. And not ampersand, and I'll get into that in a bit. Now, Leia Brackett, holy shit, she has a career. The Big Sleep, Rio Bravo, The Long Goodbye. She'd eventually earn the nickname the Queen of Space Opera because of this, but before this, it was mostly Westerns. No sci-fi whatsoever. I couldn't see how she got hooked into Lucas to help him with the script, but they did work closely together. He came up with a story. She helped him hash it out. Unfortunately, she did not make it to the final draft. She actually died before it got to that point. They brought in Lord Kasdan to help finish this off. He would go on to write Return of the Jedi um, and then The Bodyguard. Force Awakens, Solo, and The Big Chill. But this was his first film. He had to come in and finish this up. But for everything else, we've got Industrial Light and Magic uh, coming back for special effects. And John Williams, Star Wars, Jaws. You've heard his music so many times in so many places. So what you have here is a movie that's familiar enough, but still it's a whole other monster. But Josh, considering this was a film that was different enough... Okay, Tom, we get it. You like the sound of your own voice. Yes, go give us a box office, Josh. Shush. Thank you, Tom. Finally. Um, So, yes, uh, Empire Strikes Back, as we already noted, was released in May 21st, 1980. This uh, had like six re-releases in the box office. Its original release, it pulled in $209 million, which was pretty good for the day. Adjusted for inflation, it made $899 million. The only two Star Wars movies that are above that adjusted for inflation is The Force Awakens, which again adjusted is $989, and A New Hope, which is $1.6 billion. So in terms of actual just standard domestic dollars, this movie is actually the 11th highest grossing uh, Star Wars film. Comes in at about $2 million below Solo, A Star Wars Story, amazingly enough. Really? Hmm. But yeah, so yeah, this is like not even in the top 10 of highest grossing uh, Star Wars films, but it did amazing in its day. It was in the box office for 12 weeks um, and it was at number one for all but two of those weeks. Amazingly enough, on its fourth week of release, it dropped to number three and then it went back to number one for pretty much all but its last week of release. Can anybody guess what movie uh, topped it as its and its final week of release? Batman. No, that was <laughs> nine years later, Tom. Come on. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. It was a sequel, Smokey and the Bandit 2. Oh, okay. Yeah that, was, yeah, that was the movie that topped it. But I can't really get into what was in the box office at the time, because if you listen to our Flash Gordon episode and our Jaws episode, I do go into the issues with the box office back in pre-basically 1980 time frame is that uh, I'll just quickly rehash it. 
before pretty much 1984 and earlier or 1983 and earlier, theaters had to manually input their data, mail it off to a central source, and then it was calculated by hand by a group of people. And so they would only report the numbers for big ticket movies like that on the weekends that they were released. Big dick movies. Yeah. Big dick it movies. Big dick movies, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so like, if you look at its weekend, it's uh, especially on Box Office Mojo, it's the only movie for its week of release. However, its first re-release in 92, uh, it beat out First Blood, r- the first Rambo movie. Um, its biggest re-release was the special edition in 97. It came in at number one with $21 million. And then number two in the box office that weekend was... Episode four at $11 million because that was when they released all three of them within like a month apart. Oh, yeah. They need to do that again. Remember they tried to do the 3D thing with the Phantom Menace yeah, back in what was like it doesn't, need a, it doesn't need a gimmick, though. It's Star Wars. It sells itself. It doesn't need a gimmick. I totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. But uh, going back to – actually, I don't have anything else. That's all I've got. Uh, so, so the question I have for you then, which one version are we watching? Actually, I think we are watching probably the special edition because Empire is the one that was changed the least. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the big changes in this one is uh, the Luke scream when he falls down. And actually, I'm kind of hopping into uh, Dan's territory here. But uh, I know Cloud City was a big one on that one. But uh, that's all I've got. Now, I'm going to actually hand things over to Dan, who's going to give us some trivia about this movie. Yay, it's finally my turn. I got nothing. All right. Good episode, guys. Well, I've got a few things. I don't want to go on too long. Honestly, everyone here has seen this movie multiple times. We've probably read the various trivia bits on it. We know some of the stuff like the original line of, no, I am your father was Obi-Wan killed your father and only a few people knew the actual line. So like we, we know some of those trivia bits, but I did find some interesting stuff on this. Well, Tom mentioned it in the meta. This built on the legacy of The Godfather Part 2. This film more or less codified the concept of the sequel being deeper, darker, better, everything than the original movie. Because they don't have to do the origin story again. They, they've got more room to play with the characters and stuff like that. And then normally they also get more budget so they can do more special effects, do more action set pieces, um, things like that. So see here, uh, Lando Calrissian, uh, one of the first ideas for him was to have him be a clone who survived the Clone Wars, uh, which was mentioned back in uh, Star Wars A New Hope. He was supposed to lead legions of clones on a planet and uh, they didn't have the budget to do that. Another idea was that Lando was a descendant of survivors of the Clone Wars. He was born into a family who had originally reproduced solely by cloning. His original name, I think, was Lando Kadar. And also, he didn't have any ties to uh, Han Solo at first. They changed all of that during the second phase of the script writing because they didn't really have the budget to dive too much into what the lore of the Clone Wars was. And honestly, we had no idea what the Clone Wars would end up being until like 20 some odd years later. Isn't it funny looking back that Lobot is the one that looks most like a clone? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. And it's just like one single line in A New Hope when he just turns to Obi-Wan and says, you fought with my father in the Clone Wars? Ended up yeah. not even being answered in lore for like 20 some odd years. Is What the hell was the Clone Wars? Single uh, line launched a whole prequel trilogy. Yeah, and like I said, they couldn't do the thing with Lando where he was going to be a clone who settled a planet full of clones of other Landos, I guess. Because they didn't have the budget to duplicate Billy T. Williams a thousand times. <laughs> and they didn't think Lando City sounded good. Yeah. So, um, but that's just because they didn't have the budget. But it, And they were already over budget. In fact, they were triple over the budget in this. They were behind schedule. This movie took 180 days to film, which was like unheard of back then. They were plagued by a bad snowstorm in Norway and... If anyone wants to know how bad it was, the scene where Luke escapes from the Wampa Lair was actually just achieved by opening the door to their hotel that they were staying at. That's how bad the snowstorm was. And they just filmed Mark Hamill running around outside the hotel. (laughs) Jeez, nice. I did not know that. And then also, like, everywhere they filmed, the film also suffered severe overcharges on location by locals that were eager to cash in on the franchise. So they upped everything and raised property or not property, but like production taxes on them. And like the locals overcharged for things like hotel rooms and car rentals and all this other stuff. Um, it's actually was parodied in the um, Simpsons episode where they're filming the uh, radioactive man movie where the city of Springfield ups the price of everything to the point where the movie actually ran out of budget. Um, 
it, that actually caused Lucas to shoot every subsequent Star Wars movie that he was shooting after that under fake names to prevent the price gouging. Like, no kidding. Yeah, when he would submit a permit for a town saying, hey, I want to film a movie here, he would have one of his production assistants submit the permit so it didn't come in under George Lucas because so people wouldn't recognize the name. And then they would they would name the movie something else. It was not called Return of the Jedi. In fact, I I cannot Wasn't remember. Wasn't it Blue what it was. Harvest? Might, yeah, Blue Harvest, yeah, because Family Guy did that. So yeah, it was mm-hmm. Blue Harvest. But, and he did it with the prequels too. It's like he didn't film them under their real names because he did pre- prevent the gri- price gouging. I think that became Hollywood practice too. Yeah. For sake. It, all the Marvel movies do that now, not only because of the pricing, but because fans trying to show up and take pictures of their sets to give out spoilers. Yeah, yeah. And also, this kind of started the secrecy of uh, his script writing process and to the point where like certain actors didn't get the whole script. Certain actors don't get told what certain lines are going to be and all that because he wanted to prevent the big reveal of uh, Darth Vader being Luke Skywalker's father. So, Wait, what? <laughs> damn it. I'm sorry I spoiled it for everybody. <laughs> All right, Nigel, do you want to go ahead and continue? Yeah, so I only have two things left. Um, I I found this interesting for Star Wars fans who pay attention. This is the only Star Wars movie in the original trilogy that does not have any scenes on Tatooine. It uh, didn't appear again until Return of the Jedi. Tatooine does appear in every movie of the prequel trilogy at least once and didn't show up again until Episode Nine. Considering it's a bass backwards planet that's supposed to be like on the butt end of the universe... It's got a lot of people coming to it. Well, I mean, just keep in mind, Tatooine is the equivalent of Kansas in uh, this, like Superman, you know, and that's a big deal in Superman. So for whatever reason, a lot of people like to come to Arizona and we are a desert just like Tatooine. So Mm. for whatever reason, people want to go to the desert. People are stupid. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting that this is the only movie in the original trilogy that doesn't have a scene on Tatooine. And it's the only planet that appears six times in the entire Skywalker saga. So, kind of interesting. Tatooine, a very important planet in the Star Wars universe. And if you don't consider the Disney trilogy canon, it's only five times in in Star Wars. And I don't. Uh, And then uh, my last little bit of trivia is that Star Wars was a runaway success. And it kick-started the whole franchise. But this film is the one where it gave us most of the tropes and most of the things that we think about when we think of Star Wars. The Imperial March started in this movie. Um, Bounty Hunters became a bigger deal because of Empire Strikes Back, and Bounty Hunters are now a big part of the Star Wars franchise, especially with the popularity of the Mandalorian show that's on Disney Plus right now. And also, this is the first movie, and it's in a lot of subsequent movies in the franchise, of the main cast is split off into different teams, so to speak, for separate adventures. In the first movie, the main cast kind of stuck together the whole time. Like they went to the Death Star, rescued Leia, and then they all go to Yavin, and then they're all there again at the end. But this one, obviously, they're together on Hoth, but then Luke goes off on his own adventure, and they go off on their own adventure, and they don't converge again until the end of the movie. And that's kind of a thing they do in now all Star Wars films. Breaking the D&D rule. Never split the party. Well, it's obviously a very successful thing in Star Wars because they do it all the time in all the movies now. And I didn't even think about that until I looked that up. Even the, the prequel trilogy, the, the party splits up and does their own thing for a while. And uh, I think in The Force Awakens, the main group stays together up until they go fight uh, yeah. Star Starkiller Base is when the, the party finally split up and did their own thing. But yeah. Can that even be right? Because Poe doesn't meet Rey until the third movie. That's a good point. Well, Poe was supposed to die in that first one, but um, what's his name convinced the writers and directors, you know, maybe I shouldn't die, Jedi hand wave. You're right. And then in the last one, he's like, I should have died. (laughs) (laughs) Um, One one thing that 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 kind of makes me think about is the fact that in A New Hope, it's very streamlined. Like, I've never really thought about it until now that you kind of have this story where there's not really any divergent stories at all. I mean, it just mm-hmm. follows that cast all the way through. And yeah, the only it. separation I mean, in A New Hope is in the first act of the movie, Leia's been captured by Vader and she's taken to the Death Star. So there are scenes on the Death Star with her and Vader and their own thing. And then Luke and Han and Chewie and Obi-Wan are in the droids are, are on tattooing at first. And the, like, but there's no point where the main cast really splits up and goes off on their own adventures. That, that started in this film. Yet somehow Chewbacca doesn't get a map. I'm sorry. It's such a it, was. <laughs> it is. It really is. Ruins yeah. the experience. Yeah. Hashtag justice for Chewbacca. Wookie life. <laughs> he got it. Right. 
Yeah, as a footnote in the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, we meant to give you this like 30 years ago. God You're welcome, Maz Kanata. God, the new uh, trilogy. Oh, can we never watch the new trilogy? Just <laughs> Anywho, well, you know what? We're talking about it. Let's let's all get together and, and discuss this. We're not really going to do expectations tonight because we kind of all know what we're going to get out of this film. Like we've everyone here seen it a hundred times if we've seen it once. So uh, yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna discuss our reactions to this film the first time we saw it or the hundredth time we saw it. What's our favorite memories of this movie? What's this movie mean to Star Wars fans? Like, why is this normally considered the best of the franchise? Um, but you know what? We're going to start off with our esteemed guests, uh, Wink and Punk. Um, what do you guys have to say about this film? What are, you, what are your guys' memories of this movie? Uh, well, I mean, you know, things like that. Well, well I mean, aside, aside from, from this from being, being the second best sequel in Star Wars, Wars, you know, obviously behind The Last Jedi, Jedi. Um, the one <laughs> thing that happened... I- All right, you're done. You're out. Yeah, you're uh, done. <laughs> oh, you're having mic issues again. I'm sorry. You're going to have to... <laughs> Anyway, uh, expectations for this film. I mean, I, I remember watching this movie and, and a new movie. Oh, probably, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad went to the theater to see them, them. Uh, uh, whenever they, they did the re-releases. And that and was kind of the first time I remember seeing the scene. It's like the first time I ever like, stood in a long ass line to go see a movie. And I guess the I guess biggest the thing I remember, thing I remember you, know, you know, was obviously the moment, moment where, uh, spoiler alert, you figure, figure out that Darth, Darth Vader is his father. And, you know, it's, you know, kind, it's of kind of crazy, crazy whenever you, know, you first learn about that moment, moment and then start thinking back to everything that's happened. happened. And you're like, you're like, like crap. It's, I don't know, it's such a good movie for so many, so many different reasons. But, you know, that kind of moment always, always obviously stood out to me. But it does every body. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Jamie? Uh, this movie has the greatest character in all of Star Wars in it. So I am very happy we're we'll watching it. Wink already knows. Wampa is the best character in all. Wait, stuff, wait. So, <laughs> just to be able to watch Wampa again in his element um, will be fantastic. So, as far, beyond that, as far as expectations go, my favorite Star Wars movie is Revenge of the Sith. Yes, I said Revenge of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars movie. So, everybody else says this movie. So, I'm happy to watch it again. Just to see where everyone else comes from. Because it is great. But, uh, yeah. I am looking forward to, you know, Vader versus Luke again. All the scenes on Hoth. There's just so many great parts to this movie that I don't often go back to rewatch. I mean, every time you watch it, you can probably catch something different. So, Do you remember the first time you saw this film? The first time I saw this film... No, <laughs> it's been so long. Obviously, everyone's probably the same. Uh, I think I'm a little older than Wink. I was born in 1982. So the movie came out two years before I was born. Uh, I don't remember watching Star Wars until I was probably a teenager. So I probably saw the Star Wars five, six years before the prequels even came out. So do I remember it fully? No, but I do remember from the first time watching the first trilogy being completely enamored by it. And part of that was AT-ATs. I've got the giant Lego AT-AT. It's probably one of my favorite things I own. Uh, so there's a lot to the original trilogy that I love and think fondly of, even though I can't recall specifically. Yeah. Those yeah. Nice. Uh, I mean, do, you, do, do any watching standouts? Like I was on a date in high school and I was with the, the cheerleader or nothing really standing out there. <laughs> Dude, we went to Star to Wars say. movies. Don't we go to see Star Wars movies? Was make was making out with chicks in the movie which, theater? Yeah, which cheerleader decided to go to Star Wars? That's what I want to know. That's the one I need to ask. Tom, you went to the same high school I did. You told anyone, male or female, "Hey, I'm going to go see the new Star Wars movie." Yeah, your ass was spending the rest of the day in a locker. I didn't know what kind of school you went to. It could have been different. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, you came to the movie in cosplay? No, I just haven't pulled my wedgie off of my head yet. <laughs> 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 this isn't a hood. This is not a cape. <laughs> it's definitely not a brown Jedi robe. <laughs> I love how you painted that street. <laughs> Professional podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> how about you guys? What, what about you? Well, um, my uh, story with sci-fi goes back to when I was in fourth grade. I'm uh, like a year younger than you, uh, punk. So 
Like I was born in 83. So I was born the year of freaking return of the Jedi came out like back in fourth grade. Um, I remember exactly what got me started in sci-fi. I went to the library in fourth grade and I got a return of the Jedi picture book and i checked that out took it home read it a hundred times i had no idea what was going on but i loved the idea of a laser sword or whatever and the aliens i thought it was really cool so what does my dad do for me he borrows from my aunt all six vhs tapes of star trek the movies (laughs) they're the same thing (laughs) space whales yes so um i and i watched all of those movies probably a hundred times um, without even knowing that there was a show called Star Trek. And then somewhere in there, I got back into Star Wars, and that became all-encompassing in my life. I actually can't even think of a time where I didn't know Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's dad. Like, I don't think that was ever, like, a spoiler for me. Because I don't remember being shocked by that at all. But, uh, yeah, it's like, I went from Star Wars to Star Trek back to star wars but i would have to say that of the star wars movies this is probably my favorite mostly because i love movies that have a darker theme and i love it when the bad guys win but i do agree with you punk revenge of the sith i I will totally hear arguments for that being anybody's favorite film because that is a good film in my my opinion um it's easily the best of the prequels but uh no i know i'm gonna enjoy this movie tonight it's been a few months since i've seen it i think i knew we were coming up watching this movie for a while so i've been avoiding watching it i'm looking forward to tonight so nigel what about you uh you know again i've seen this movie a thousand times but this isn't just my favorite star wars movie this is in my top five favorite movies of all time period there's so much about this movie i love i love the storytelling in this movie, they do such a great job and I'll maybe go through more of it on my final thoughts. I, I, it's funny. You mentioned that your dad went out and got you star Trek movies when you wanted to go see these movies, but this movie is, is the sequel to star Wars and it codified a lot of the tropes that are in star Wars. Well, I maintain that this movie and star Trek Two: the wrath of Khan have a little bit in common, not plot wise because they're completely different stories, but Star Trek, especially in movie form, has been trying to chase the ghost of the Wrath of Khan since that movie came out. Like they've been trying to find another movie that captures that level of success with storytelling and character development and suspense and drama and all of the things that just came together in this just perfect storm of a film. And this film is a lot like that. Like this film is character development and drama and storytelling and brilliant acting from everyone involved in this film. And Star Wars has been trying so hard to do that, especially with the the storytelling bit of The Empire Strikes Back of the good guys do not win in this movie. They survive, but they don't win. And I love that. But Star Wars has been trying to do that ever since this movie came out. And they've had middling success at best and absolute failures at worst. So I, I just say that they're, they're a lot alike in that. But as far as like my experience with this film, um, I, I remember when I first got into Star Wars, uh, my uncle had them on um, VHS, and uh, I actually wanted to see Star Wars for the first time because I don't know if you guys remember, there was a TV show called Muppet Babies. <laughs> okay. Well, at the time, I was watching that cartoon, and Muppet Babies did an episode where they parodied Star Wars they would have bits of the movie actually intersped into the cartoon. Like they would open up a closet door and see a tie fighter flying towards it with a blasting and all that. It's like, Oh God, I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. And I remember I watched that cartoon. I wasn't really into it for the cartoon at the time because it was, I was a little older than the target, but when you only got one TV in the house and that's what your brother wants to watch and he's a little younger than you, that's what you're watching. But that episode, I remember thinking, I want to see the movie that they're doing in this episode. And I asked my dad, I'm like, what are they doing in that episode? And dad's like, oh yeah, that's star Wars. And I'm like, I, I don't know what that is. You know? So he, my uncle, he let my, my uncle let me borrow his VHS tapes. And I watched all three of them in the same weekend. And I do remember being blown away by the reveal that Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. I didn't know that at the time. I'd never seen it. And I've been so blown away by that reveal that I wish I was old enough to go to the movie theater and see this reveal 
in person because I still don't think there's been a one like it in movies since like where it's like this earth shattering of a reveal and the fact that they could do this before internet spoilers and before the spoilers came out because I actually had the force awakens spoiled for me the night before I saw it and it was actually in Star Trek of all, online of all games uh, I logged into the game and in local chat uh, somebody was mentioning something and he goes oh yeah Kylo Ren kills Han Solo yeah dude and I was like I think I I what? think I got spoiled by that in WoW. Actually. No shit. Yeah, and and I I mean, it wasn't too much of a spoiler spoiler for me because I do remember thinking when they were filming The Force Awakens, I'm like Han Solo's gonna die, and I do remember my wife's like, "Why do you think he's gonna die?" And I'm like, "Because Harrison Ford's been trying to kill him since The Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's going to die in The Force Awakens, it's gonna be Han Solo." And I so I was right in that prediction, but it was still kind of spoiled for me. I still remember like, long yeah, I don't want you to tell me it's true before I see it." Right. And I thought like, you know, you'd think Star Trek Online, you're kind of safe from that shit. Nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So now whenever a big movie's coming out, like I, I actually made a point not to log into that game when Endgame, when Mar when Avengers Endgame came out, because I just didn't want to be spoiled. So God, you got to go for on a complete social media blackout if you want a big movie that's going to be spoiled. Yeah, but that wasn't around back then. There were no inter there was no internet in 1980, obviously, for someone to get out of the movie theater and immediately tweet Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker's father. You could spend almost a whole couple of weeks before that that started to get through word of mouth that that was the big reveal. So that's kind of cool. Um, what about you, Tom? Well, damn you, because I was going to mention the Muppet Babies thing too. <laughs> It's like all roads lead to Muppet Babies. What can I say? <laughs> no, for me, um, for me, the last time I saw this film was actually a year ago. Uh, barely, actually, no, just a couple months ago. Disney was uh, trying to get people back in the theaters right when we were doing the summer COVID lull. And a local theater of mine was having um, an Empire Strikes Back beer tasting. Obviously, this time around, it was a little sparse crowd. But I, it was the special edition one, uh, which I missed when they re-released back in the 1990s. I saw the, the first one and Return of the Jedi in theaters when they were re-released special edition. But I was I pissed me off that I missed the middle one. I think it was grounded for grades or something like that. But for me, it's my earliest memories. Like you guys, I kind of always knew the big reveals were not that big. I'd always seen them like bits and pieces since I was a kid watching them on TV. But that's also my memories of it. Like my dad and I just watching it, he, he they'd have it on like this Friday night movie on TV or we'd rent it. And he was always a third shift or so we'd watch it and he'd fall asleep on the couch, but I just watched it there with him. Mm -hmm. And so it's, not just the excitement of seeing it, like pew pew laser swords. It's just there with my dad, uh, second generation Star Trek geek because of him. But some of my fonder memories are just sitting down watching the old like four by three adapted to fit your TV screen versions of these movies. So nostalgia for me a little bit on this one. But yeah, that's so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it with everyone here. I know what I'm going to get into. I know what I'm going to get out of this. But those are my memories. And getting drunk with a bunch of drunk people to see this film also was a good choice about a year ago. I bet so. <laughs> Did, quick, quick question. Does anybody remember the like Tiny Toons show from the 90s? Heck yeah. Like, yes. I remember, I think it was the first episode of that. There was a big, there was a joke. They did a Star Wars parody on that one. And they're like, and these are the stormtroopers. And they went over to some cartoon stormtroopers and they started like banging on like the aluminum things and like making storms. I, I, I always think about that when you guys uh, were talking. I was just like, <laughs> that, 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 those are some memories that I have of this one too. Yeah, that's probably one of the most like spoofed and quoted things that exists in other media. Is this oh, series? Yes. Oh, very I'm, easily. I mean, what's what's some what are some of your guys is? I know we're going to get into the quiz in a second, but I mean, of the parodies, though, what have it been some of your favorites of this one? Spaceballs, spaceballs, spaceballs. Well, never spaceballs. Yeah. What was that? Never <laughs> seen it. Uh, never seen no. spaceballs. Wow, no, no we get the same reaction when we say that on our podcast. Actually, I've seen it. I just did. Wow. Well, the 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 humor is a little. Uh, 
referential in that movie and it does kind of get dated i just i, I saw it in, it always reminded right. me of monty python and i've never been a big monty python i like monty python i've just never gotten around to watching space balls i just i don't know never been that high of a priority apparently oh well <laughs> so we're never having these guys back on the podcast <laughs> Kidding me? All the all the technical problems and shoddy workmanship of this one? We'll be lucky if they'll return Josh's phone calls ever again. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I say, we're going to get a beer when I come down there in July. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to disconnect my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting, you're getting so good. ghosted as soon as this episode's over. Got him, dude. At, at this point, with the way my technology works, I'll be lucky if I get a message. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, go ahead, Tom. No, you go ahead, Nigel. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was going to... I'll go ahead. I was going to say, um, if we're going to segue into the quiz. Yes, because now we know what we expect from this film, the memories we share of the film. But do we really know this film? And with that, I'll introduce the chairman and CEO of Rob's Custom PCs, uh, Rob. But before you do the quiz, Rob, I mean, you know, if you want to share something about the film, you can go ahead. I know this is one of your favorite films of all time. Oh, th this is... Uh, without question, my favorite film of all time. In fact, as I'm sitting here at my desk, uh, within the immediate side of me, I have the theatrical poster on the wall. I have the 40th anniversary uh, calendar sitting here. And I have a plastic Han Solo in carbonite sitting up on the top of my media. Nerd! Cabinet, so. <laughs> Nerd! <laughs> and Rob has a girlfriend, too. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> But yeah, th this this is definitely my my favorite movie of all time. And there's so many great things about it. It's you know it, it obviously spoiler alert, the Darth Vader reveal as Luke's father. That's huge. It's the introduction of Yoda. It's got the classic Hawk battle scene, Cloud City. I mean, there's just there's so many things in this movie that are just absolutely iconic. Not just a Star Wars, but just just the movies in general. I just I love mm -hmm. it. I watch it every year. It's, yeah. And it's, for those listeners, great. that's part of the reason why we're having Rob here as our guest quizzer. And also because this destination was his idea. He recommended this to us. Like, guys, come on. Well, I don't think it was so much this film. It was like any Star Wars film. Like, Rob's like, do a Star Wars movie. And we just, yeah, we picked a good one. Enough. But we wanted to do a good one, though. We didn't want to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Rob, thank you for popping in and, uh, you know, Letting, you know, quizzing us in all of this. <laughs> it's Wampa! And Wampa. Yes, Wampa. Let's talk about him more. <laughs> <laughs> we will. There'll be final thoughts after the movie's over. You can talk about the amazing two scenes that he was in. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we know Dan won the, the trivia quiz last week, but Dan will not be administering it this week. We have uh, given that honor to Rob. So Rob has uh, designed and wrote a quiz which will be a million times better than me and Dan's worst one, we promise. With that, I'm going to go ahead and give the mic to Rob to uh, explain the rules of his quiz, and then we're all going to fumble over the questions and hopefully try to answer them and get the most points and win. So, Rob? Yeah, so... I have to admit, I didn't get that creative. I pretty much just uh, went the classic uh, IMDb review route. Only little, I guess, tiny little uh, twist to it. Not really a twist. I'm not going to stick necessarily just to like a line from the review or the title. I may do both. It basically just depended on which review I thought was a good representation of that review. So in any case... Uh, as much as I love this movie, uh, believe it or not, there are people on the internet that don't like things. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were definitely people <laughs> on IMDb that did not like this movie. We usually call those people Tom. Yeah. <laughs> no, but even Tom admitted to liking this film. So, well, yeah, my God. Typically, people who hate I mean, mainstream film is, is Tom. This, this he is always gives great good. about freedom is you God. have the freedom to be wrong about things like those people. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. Like some, yeah, some people think that uh, Revenge of the Sith is the best movie, and they're allowed to be wrong, too. <laughs> <laughs> so All right, see you guys later. We will uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get, get to the reviews here, so uh, I'll go ahead and give you the first one here. Now, obviously, we've got five people, or four people, four or five. Math is also my subject. Five people here, so are we going to do one at a time, or is it like we're going to buzz in? 
Um, we said you're keeping it normal, so I think let's just go top to bottom, I guess, and then uh, we'll give it, and we'll keep switching it up each time. We're allowed yeah, to pick the same works. one, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how he's got this set up, but we kind of do Price is Right rules on this one, right? Yes. Okay. And we'll we'll, we'll do the standard uh, two points if you get, get it right on as well. Okay. Right on. So, all right. Uh, first one. This came from uh, user MB1456. And it who was is this, uh, who is this directed sorry. to? Sorry. Yeah, who's going first? Um, let's go with Dan. Since, uh... <laughs> Damn it. So uh, yeah, so this one was uh, written by MB1456 on January 21st, 2018, and this is a line from the review. There's some good action for sure, but not as much as you'd have expected or hoped from a Star Wars movie. Not that I mind, because I liked a lot of the conversation between the characters, especially what Yoda says about the Force and how to use it to Luke Skywalker, and when Darth Vader spills the beans on who he really is to Luke. Uh, I will say 8 out of 10. And you got it right on the money. 8 out of 10. Oh, but you didn't give Tom and Josh a chance to um, give their... I pick 8 out of 10, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I win. I win. I win. I win. Yeah, we, we do prices right rules. You got to you gotta give me okay, and then Tom right. and then John. Yeah. Now, that was, that was the warm-up question. Now that we know was, what we're in the, for. I'm a rookie at this. <laughs> you are forgiven. It's not like you, you've given the, the quiz a thousand times and tried to mix it up and screw it up like me and Dan have. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so let, it, let each of us go through it. We'll all give our answer, and then we'll uh, go based off that. All right. That works for me. All right, well, let, let's, uh, let's try a different one here then. So I'm going to read you the title and a line from this one. Uh, this is from Art Vandalay Importer Exporter. Uh, great, <laughs> great username. Uh, title is Hard to Believe the Series Survived This Terrible Movie. <laughs> wow. Line from the review uh, At least the original Star Wars had a story with a beginning and end. The sequel is nothing more than an action filled installment in a Saturday afternoon serial. How about anyone older than 12 enjoy this? Dang. Well, he must be a hoot at parties. <laughs> Yeah, Dana, I think you still got the first one here. Yes. I'm good. Uh, two out of ten. Um, I guess I'll right. go um, one. This sounds like a one-er. Uh, Wink, Punk, if one of you guys want to take it. Uh, I'll say three. That's what I was going to say, too. I'm, I'm, I'm banking on this guy liking his Saturday mornings. All right. So, so, wait, so GMP, you said three. Wink, you said three. Yes. I'm going to go four. I think that's everyone, right? Yep. 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 Well, uh, Tom is going to win this one. He got wow. right on my as a one out of oh, two. Boom, Ooh. baby. Boom. Starting off strong. Rob, you are already my favorite quizzer. Thank you. <laughs> so, Wink, Punk, um, since you two are kind of like on the same you know, podcast, you want to just like be on the same team and combine your guests, or you want to try to like see which one of you knows? I'll let them play individually. Okay. No normally, when we do this, we don't let anybody pick the same answer twice or like get the same answer. Uh, but uh, okay. since there's five of us playing this time, it's going to be kind of hard to not overlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we only get 10. We're taking 50% that way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So. And I, I typically win by prices writing correctly because it's usually two people usually answering. So if Dan will pick like eight, I'll pick a seven, even if I think the answer is like a five. Right. But just because if I'm closer, that means I get the point. Right. Okay. Got it. All right. So question two, Tom is ahead by two points. Boom, baby. All right. So this review uh, comes from the music dude, 22 dude spelled D E W D uh, line from the review. I just watched this film all the way through not too long ago, and I was shocked at how boring and forgettable this episode was. What the hell's wrong with these people? I can't believe people still really think this film represents Star Wars at its peak when The Phantom Menace exists. The only truly classic thing to come out of this film is the Imperial March. It's an iconic score and deserves all the praise it gets. I hate this guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> zero. Can I say zero? Because wow, this guy's an ass. I don't. Oh, this kid. This guy might have just insulted my kid. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say one again, because Jesus. Josh. Um, I'm gonna say four again. Uh, Jim Peter Wink. 
Can I'm going to go with a five. I'll go back to three. Dan? I'm going to say a two. Well, I think uh, Wink wins yes. this one. This is actually a five out of oh, ten. Wow. That was, seemed worse than the first one you had. <laughs> no, no, there was a strategy here. You could tell that the person was probably exaggerating. They spelled dude D E W D. Come on. He's just trolling. You know what the hell he's doing. Troll I did feel like I needed yeah. to point that out. Yeah. Leave it to an editor to pick up on that. Good job, <laughs> Wink. Still a pox upon his house. A pox, I say. <laughs> Alright, on to the next one. Uh, this one is from Z Cone Dog. Uh, in terms of action and adventure, Empire Strikes Back is a rousing success. There are enough space flights, phaser blasts, not correct, and lightsaber wielding <laughs> to satisfy the visual effect junkies. The only thing missing, however, is that quote unquote sense of something epic inherent in its original predecessor. And let's go to uh, Wink first. I am going to say seven. And uh, how about uh, GNP? I'll go eight. Uh, Tom? Um, I'm going to steal from Josh and go with a... F- no. Yeah, I'm going to go with four. Uh, Dan? Nine. And how about Josh? Um, ten. Well, looks like once again, uh, Wink has gotten it right on the money. It's yes. a seven out of ten. <laughs> the, <laughs> podcast, <laughs> the podcast hosts are not going to win this. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm starting to feel like this is our normal podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Where I also lose trivia. <laughs> All right, next one comes from Ithaqua1987. Uh, Empire is more character-driven than the original and relies more on comic relief to help lighten the mood, but it doesn't go overboard with the humor. Is there more humor in this than the first movie? The story is more refined, and the acting is better as well. And I think we'll go back to Wink again. Alright, I'm gonna say nine. And let's go to Dan. Eight. Uh, Josh? Um, seven. (laughs) I feel like we're just counting down now. (laughs) Six! (laughs) Uh... Uh, GMP? I'll say 10. And Tom? I'm going to say 4. Of course again. you do. Well, I, I think Wink is going to win this quiz, because uh, this is a 9 out of 10. <laughs> Dear God. Isn't Wink overdue to have some microphone issues or something that he doesn't have to talk no more? I could do a, I could do a literal <laughs> mic drop that might take me. <laughs> Wink has been kicked from the chat. I think we have some issues. I guess he's not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I'm starting to fill what you fill every week on your podcast now. Oh. <laughs> a loss of hope and desperation. <laughs> Wink is going through a tunnel. Sorry. All right. I have two more here. <laughs> is there even a point to them? Holy cow. Hey, wow. hey, wait. Rob has patiently waited this whole time. Let him have his moment, even if we get, Te- you know, destroyed. Technically, I have three more, so technically someone could actually tie it up. But Spoiler alert. It's probably going to be Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Let make All him right. pick last. So the next one, this is from uh, Sp- <laughs> Spleen. And this is when it was actually written in 1999. Uh, it avoids having the standard shoot 'em up ending, says a friend of mine, by not having an ending. I suppose this is what most people think. All the same, the film manages to form a satisfying whole, or at least a whole that satisfies me. I'm therefore inclined to think that it does have an ending. <laughs> we all love a satisfying yes. hole. Um. <laughs> um, let's go to let's switch it off. Let's let's go to Josh first on this one. Well, let's see. Satisfying holes. He likes those. Um, I'm gonna go eight out of ten. So there's two holes. Good call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Tom next. Hmm. Hmm, I'm going to say, oh God, how satisfying a hole is he going into, though? That's the question. I'm going to say six. <laughs> All right, uh, GNP? I'm a tense because it has the biggest hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan? Uh, nine. All right. And finally, Can we wink. take the same answer as someone else? Okay. Yes. Because the correct answer is ten. Wow, the uh, the Shattered Order guys are, are uh, they're killing it. I here. hate them. This was a ten. Boom! <laughs> Damn. Damn. Both of them. So both of them got points. 
both of them. <laughs> oh my god! I knew god. if I kept picking ten, it would work eventually. You know, <laughs> you know what? You know what? The opening sketch was real. You guys can have this fucking podcast. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I got them. <laughs> You see, in our podcast, Dan's the angry one. <laughs> oh, for fu- oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, I think at this point, I, I think uh, Wink has officially won it. But uh, if you guys want, I'll give you the last one. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> just, we'll keep digging <laughs> this, that hole this deeper. One, this one just made me laugh. Uh, title is <laughs> Luke Skywalker, two words, uh, the idiot. And the line that I picked out of this LOL, Luke Skywalker plays one of the most idiotic heroes I've ever come across. He's such an idiot in this movie that it's pretty annoying and chalkboard scratching. Let's make Wink go first. <laughs> <sighs> was that the whole review? No, that was that was okay. one line out of a fairly okay. long review, actually. So if they took the time to write a long review, and that's only a part of it, the correct answer is going to be four. I'm feeling very confident. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> At this point, you have a right to be. <laughs> I have nothing to lose, so I'm going to guess 14. 14. It's not even on the chart. Solid guess. Go, Tom. No, no, that's not me. I was mimicking <laughs> Wink oh. here. I'm going to be next. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say seven. All right. Uh, how, about, uh, how about you, Dan? What do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with number eight again because i've only gotten it right once uh how about josh well i have put a lot of thought into this and i picked an answer totally scrapped it and i'm gonna steal from wink and go four all right bold strategy cotton let's see if it pays off (laughs) give me a two at least one point tonight (laughs) i'll take a two well uh, i think this is sort of a tie uh josh guessed a two and both you and Wink guessed a four. This is a three out of ten. Oh! oh my <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, technically, we don't give points if uh, you're the same amount of okay. normally, but uh, I guess closest rules apply this time would no, be... No, no, I, I like we'll get... the idea that I'm the only one on our podcast who scored any legitimate <laughs> points. Isn't it the closest without going over? I'm just saying. I guess two. True that, price that, is right rule. Well, since there, like I said, er, when we started this, I said uh, it's, we could pick the same ones. Normally that's not a rules, but there's five of us. So even though I think the three of us get a point. So the only one who could shut up tonight was Dan. <laughs> Which, I'm sorry, I'm okay Dan. With that. <laughs> well, this journey ended the same way it began, with me getting shut out and pissed. And you guys enjoy the movie. I can hate this place. I'm done forever. I would say Tom played the music, but Rob should say that tonight. And see. Well, <laughs> Tom played the music. I, I, see, I see a podcast. With three friends watching movies, and two guests from another podcast, and the jokes. So lame. So lame! Oh, it's this podcast. Oh. I I mean, welcome back to another galaxy-spanning episode of The Fire Pit! (laughs) I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and scruffy nerf herder, Tom! And I'll have you know, nerf herders, we are the cornerstone of our economy, thank you very much. After all, it's either nerf or nothing. You're welcome. And thank you for joining the herd here at the fire pit. We finally made it to the first destination of our first journey in the second season that was the fire pit strikes back here at the fire pit. We braved asteroid fields like Flash Gordon and slipped some streams to some cloud cities, but we finally made it to our final destination, the Empire Strikes Back. Honestly, this journey may have been fraught with peril, but we finally got you there. Now that'll be 500 credits. 
Okay, we'll take we'll, we'll we'll take an IOU. But speaking of peril, let's see how the team is managing the perils that are the Shattered Order Podcast. You know that in the game they call them hollow tables, right? I mean, why couldn't we use something like that? Nope, stop, stop. I only agree to this because of holodeck. Do not take this from me. Jesus, Dan, seriously, it's your turn. Pay attention. I think he's still reading the ability description. I, I just, I don't, I, I, damn it. Like, why do I need an engineering degree to play this goddamn game? What the hell is prepared? And, and why are there like five Han Solos? Just push a button on the bottom right. It's really not that hard. No, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm, I'm so confused. What the hell is a Juhani? I don't understand any of these references. <laughs> are you guys all right? This is so stupid. My blue bar is gone. Does that mean I'm dead? Uh, please tell me I'm dead. This is stupid. Mm, not quite. That's your protection. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got one you might understand. It's your shields. Oh, okay. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Holy shit! That actually hit! I think I got this game figured out now, guys. What, what'd you do? I used Tom's credit card. Wait, what? Nothing. Just know that we're winning now. See? You finally figured it out. Now, if you can get your debuffs stacking correctly, you might stand a chance. Someday. <laughs> but definitely not. <laughs> well, lucky for me, I don't believe in a no-win scenario. Don't get cocky, kid. Wait, where's Josh? Ha ah! <laughs> ha! Got you! What? I, God damn it, Josh, why'd you attack me? I'm on your team! Dude, did he just betray his own teammate? Uh, how do you betray his teammate? Uh, that doesn't seem like it should be possible. Josh, what the hell? Why are you over on their side now? Um... Well, whatever. I'm out. The podcast is yours. <laughs> Just you and me now, Thompson. Well, you, me, and them. Strike me down, and I'll become more powerful than you can possibly. <laughs> I think I'm dead. Yeah, I'm definitely dead. I, uh, wink. I, I don't think they get how any of this works. Just go with it. They'll, they'll be gone in no time. So, 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 what do we talk about, guys? Guess strategy, theory crafting, big tips. See, I listen to you guys. I'd be a great third personality. Uh, no, you're on the other team. But, but my loyalty is totally to you guys. Hell, that's the only reason I started this whole podcast thing. So, like, I could find some excuse to hang out with you guys. You're just, you know, you're so awesome. And um, if you want to be on this podcast, just say the word. I'll help you kick the other guys out. Um, stand over there for just one second. Over here? Over here? Sure. Yeah, whatever. Ah. And there it is! Not that this hasn't been uh, interesting. You guys can go now. Well, okay. Well, uh, I guess you guys are the proud owners of an Ohio-based podcast. Is that where we're at? Working with Punk's time zone is hard enough, let alone Ohio. Yeah, I didn't realize you guys were in Ohio. Screw that. You, uh, you can keep it. Wait, wait, wait. So, um, you guys want to do uh, another guest spot sometime? No. no. Uh, probably not. How about a crossover episode? I would totally be down to be on your... No! So that was fun. Who wants tacos? You know what? God damn it, Josh. Tacos actually do sound good. Yeah, damn it. Let's go get some tacos, guys. And once again, the team defies the odds and proves that the surest way to victory is not being worth the effort. Great job, team. But if you want to see us put in some effort, or if you want to put in the effort of getting the word out about your efforts and products and such like that, or if you just want us to stop saying effort, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, as well as the reason for your email, whether it's to pay for an ad, suggest a destination, comment on a journey, identify a mistake, request a shout out, so on and so forth, and let us know what's on your mind. And from there, we will read what you have written 
force project it to a potential Padawan, direct them towards a desolate swamp planet to be trained by a reject from a Muppet bin, and never respond. What do you want? It's their hero's journey, not ours. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. I sense a great disturbance. Like, I should let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for joining, and as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. That ship's balls are on the top. <laughs> Boy, that reminds me of that time we built that PC together, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. You thought you fried my motherboard. <laughs> Turn it off. How many tech support guys does it take to build a PC? More than three, apparently. Wait, what the fuck? We've got tech tech support, tech support guys, guys here. We hear we pass by my mic. Wow. Hey, you have three tech support guys, and we made you sound like a robot. So just, you know, we made you, turned you into a robot. You should be, you know, honored. Uh, maybe I should have read that. It's been a while. Oh, well. <laughs> Something about Darth Vader being obsessed with a young kid. Is he a pope? <laughs> <laughs> I am not editing that in. We'll go to the Lego I go where I want, old man. You're a ghost. <laughs> you gonna help me, dude? Yeah, like I, it, I don't know. I don't you know. Gotta, if you've noticed Obi Wan. I'm dying here. Yeah, you got, a, seen, you got a space heater in that fucking robe of yours. <laughs> I, I've seen the new trilogy. You can do lightning and shit, and you can actually like punch people. Fucking help me. The young god Wampa roamed the hot <laughs> landscape, waiting for a person to eat. I think I'm starting to understand why you guys always lose at Star Wars trivia. <laughs> There's Mark Hamill coming out of his hotel room in Sweden. <laughs> Norway. <laughs> Same difference. Fun fact, the only bounty hunters from Empire Strike Back that aren't in Swaga is Forlom and Zuckus. Yep. Which one are those two? The, the robot, two that aren't in Galaxy of Heroes. Duh. The, ro the robot that's not IG-11 <laughs> IG and the, yeah. uh, the like bug-looking dude. Also, I don't know how fun that fact was, but I said it. It was a fun fact. All facts are fun. Lord Vader demands an update. Oh, uh, tell him I'm not here. <laughs> Set my status to out of office. I'm going to take a sick day. <laughs> my, my diabetes is acting up again. I got to go. Family emergency. I got to start prepping for Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. I am so far from... I just got my Vader to Relic 3. You love him. Yeah, he's fucking baller. I can't include any of this because no one on our podcast is going to get these references. <laughs> yes, but you see, they're going to shout us out on their podcast, and all of their listeners are going to listen to this episode. They're yeah, so we, yeah, they need to, yeah. Exactly. Got to give them some content, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Who is beating that tauntaun in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, when you said beating a tauntaun, I thought you were making a sexual reference. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he was. <laughs> He's learning our podcast. See, this is where GMP loves the extended uh, or special editions because they added more scenes with the Wampa. And you can actually see the Wampa clearer. Yes, more. Give me more. This is like the Sharon Sohn scene in Basic Instinct when she like uncrosses yeah. her legs. I'm sure, uh, I bet GMP's <laughs> written many a fan fiction about the Wampa. Look at the way he eats that meat. <laughs> he takes it in whole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> this was a mistake. He's okay. just saying that because he has to edit all this. I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> what? How did Han survive outside of the Tauntaun? He built the shelter. And then deconstructed it before they were looking for him? I guess yes. so. Let me get rid of that thing that'll make it easier to find me. See, they had enough of their uh, characters being put in platoons in order to get that activated. GMP and Wink got that joke. You guys didn't. It's okay, Wait, though. No, Josh, you don't have to keep explaining it. <laughs> I'm not explaining. I'm just saying you guys didn't get it, and that's okay. You're not cool enough to play this game. <laughs> How to remove Josh from the podcast. <laughs> hey, there's a Google page on it. Yeah, sweet. <laughs>
There's a, oh my god, it has a subreddit, r slash remove Josh from podcasts. Wow. Yeah, I've been kicked off like more than a dozen podcasts. Hey, I'm a moderator. <laughs> this is uh, this is about Empire, so I'll keep it going with this theme. I just had a question that I never really thought about from this movie. Mm. And that was whether the Wampa had a name. Wampa what? does have a name, but it, it couldn't have been given to her before this movie because... The name given to the Wampa in Empire Strikes Back is One Arm. Fun fact. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. As a kid, I uh, tried to uh, force pull um, penis joke. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to edit any of this in. <laughs> we, we know that Anakin made C-3PO. Was there, was it like a build a protocol droid kit that he bought or something. <laughs> Remember when I told you earlier that you're not a Jedi yet? Yeah, I wasn't lying. I can lightsaber and throw boxes at the same time. Yeah. What can you do, buddy? Yeah, now for my next trick. This is like when your dad's throwing and you're playing baseball and you're throwing the ball back and forth and your your dad is just holding back and you're like, you start throwing faster thinking you're better than him and then he just throws a 98-mile fastball at your head. Yep. Yeah. Wait. Wait. That didn't happen to everybody else? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Somebody, so, somebody, somebody reset Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, in the novelization of this book, the uh, code to uh, turn on the Empire is code, code Force Blue. I have not forgotten that. Also, the uh, trash compactor serial number is 3263827. I was 20 years old when I got laid first. <laughs> also, fun fact, <laughs> the schnitzel of meat wrapped with cheese called Cordon Blue was named after this movie. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> I don't understand the things that some people give so much attention to or care about. It, it's always been weird to me. Well, oh, it's I, like this scene right here. Um, in the first special edition, Luke screamed as he fell down. There was a huge outcry. Like, Luke wouldn't scream. He was sacrificing himself. So in the next whoa. special edition, George Lucas took it out. And then people are bitching like, oh, I liked it because it gave him some character. I'm like, dude. Shut up. <laughs> Luke's kind of a bitch. So, of course he would be yelling. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I was like, he, sh he should be yelling. Whether he sacrifices him or not, he, like, he's not the type of guy who, after he does it, would would think immediately as he's falling to his death. This was a bad idea! Why did I do this? <laughs> or like when he says, join me, and he just drops off, and you hear Luke saying, I changed my mind! <laughs> No, you join me. We'll talk about it later. Honestly, I think The Last Jedi might have been a slightly better film if they would have just owned up to The Last Jedi and just kept with that story arc the way it was flowing out. But I, I think it's also thought it was a bad thing is the fact that it was an immediate sequel to The Force Awakens. That's the first time in any of the big movies that happened. Yeah. Hey guys, the movie's over, by the way. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. For, for the sake of uh, Wink's sleep, let us uh, go ahead and work on our final thoughts. So, yes. uh, Tom, you got it first. As a standalone film, Empire kind of is weak. But as the bridge for a trilogy, I think it's there's a reason why it still is the kind of the template. Um, this is why most new Star Wars films fail, because they try too hard to be Empire Strikes Back. What I love about watching them over and over again now, especially as an editor of the podcast and everything, I see things that I didn't notice, how they edit the film. Like the scene where Vader is talking to the Emperor's like, I have felt a disturbance in the Force. You know, that scene was initially supposed to come like right after like Luke pulled the lightsaber from the snow. Story-wise, that was like, them sensing like oh shit he just unlocked a new spell he's gone from clairvoyance to force pull we need to do something about that and story-wise too that you don't pick up on that most people don't and it just frustrates you to see it now like vader 
him willy nilly killing um subordinates because they fuck up left and right. It's like you have failed me for the last time. It's not because he's that much of a villain. It's because he's after his goddamn kid, and he is emotionally invested in it, and he. He is having none of it at this point. He's, now most stories of Vader, just like, that's what he does. He's just that guy all the time. You don't really read into the nuances of the character. And I'm not going to lie. I didn't read into it like the first couple times I saw it, especially as a kid. I just thought Vader's a bad guy. He's doing this because he's bad. There's no emotional tie to what he's doing. And I hope most people, when they watch these things as they go on too, they pick up on it. And if they don't, hopefully they're seeing it now. It's like, wow, you guys are right. That's what I was getting from this. But I'm going to have some more thoughts as I go, as I always do. But anything else I could say now has been said and is going to be said. So Nigel, what about you? Time 120 of seeing this movie. How, what are your thoughts? I still say it's the best Star Wars movie in the whole saga. Um, it's still in my top favorite movies of all time. <clears throat> and the what I love the most about this movie, and I mentioned it in earlier tonight, is the character work in this movie. The writing is so tight in this film, but like they really did let the actors have so much freedom in this that the dialogue doesn't feel like people reading lines off a script and just repeating them back to each other. It really did feel like it was like, you know, no, 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 no. My character would respond this way. My character responds that way. Like Mark Hamill is so much more comfortable as Luke Skywalker in this film than he was in a new hope. But part of that's also the character himself. The character of Luke Skywalker is slowly becoming a Jedi as opposed to in a new hope when he was still like a wide eyed, bushy tailed farmer's kid. But my favorite part about this film is the last like 30 minutes. I love how Luke goes to Cloud City and gets his ass kicked for 30 minutes. He fails at everything he tries to do. And no one rescues Han. He goes into the lightsaber duel with Vader. And I didn't realize it until I was well into adulthood. Vader has complete control of that fight from the get go. Stage one of the fight is him just kind of feeling Luke out, seeing where he stands. Stage two is him showing Luke, uh, I told you earlier, you're not a Jedi. Now I'm going to show you. It's more than just laser, or laser swords, son. I'm going to take this shit off the wall and throw it at you. And then the third part of the fight is when Vader comes out of that hallway and just starts wrecking Luke's shit and cuts his hand off and shows him and shows the audience without having to tell him without a bunch of exposition. I can kill you at any point I want. I haven't tried yet. Do you want me to try? But, um... I just love this movie so much because of the characters and because of the writing and just how it's done. And I'm just going to start repeating myself like I always do. So I will go to Josh. What about you, man? Uh, easily my favorite Star Wars movie, bar none. I think one thing that you like to say, Dan, about this movie that I absolutely 100% agree with and love about this film is the fact that the good guys never win. Mm -hmm. Like they just survive this film. I always like a movie with a darker ending like so just this movie just i love it because it feels like uh i think one of the trivia that we had earlier tonight even said it feels like a chapter in a book yeah and to a degree yeah i, I agree with that but like i've also said the same thing about uh like iron man 3 or age of ultron which i consider two of the weakest marvel movies but unlike those movies, even though it is a, like obviously the middle of a trilogy, I think that it does a really good job of building up these characters that you were introduced to. So you got a lot of character development in this film. Yeah, there wasn't as many epic space battles. The lightsaber battle definitely wasn't the best in Star Wars, but I agree with you. Dan, that this is a fantastic lightsaber battle. And, you know, especially knowing all that we know now about Vader, especially even with the Disney content, I know how much of a badass Vader was. And then knowing that about him, especially knowing all this other stuff and the expanded universe and coming back to this film and watching it. Yes. Vader is purely like the lion toying with the uh, gazelle cub. Yeah. I, I don't have much more to say beyond that. Besides this, this movie is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to our esteemed guests. So wink. Um, I'm not going to talk about the lightsaber battle and Kind of, I guess, the last 30 minutes, because you guys pretty much nailed everything there. Um, it is, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, everything that leads up to very exciting last 30 minutes. Um, this 
movies. I think probably my third favorite movie of all time behind Shawshank and Tombstone. Um, Ooh. I, yeah, boy. It is. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely my favorite Star Wars movie. And I really, so my favorite quote, or I should say the quote that I use most from Star Wars is do or do not. There is no try. I love all of the stuff with Yoda, just the training that he goes through and just the teaching and the learning. And, you know, it's the journey that Luke kind of goes on in this movie. You know, I, I said earlier that, you know, Luke's kind of a bitch and, you know, It's kind of a compliment in a way because he earns everything that he ends up getting in this trilogy. And this is the movie he earns it. In the first movie, he just kind of gets wrapped up in all this as this kind of Mm -hmm. excited freedom fighter, you know, just wanting to do right. And then in this movie, he kind of grows into realizing what he has to do to actually be able to take on that fight and not just be somebody that vocalizes for it but be someone who actually gets his hands dirty and gets into the middle of it and he does that and he gets his ass kicked by vader you know and he he learns what it's actually like he gets broken down he learns a lot and the progression that he goes through i think is so interesting and then you know the fact that yoda's there That's kind of why he's exiled, because he kind of got broken down and had to run and hide. And he doesn't want Luke to necessarily do the same thing. Even though he does. Even (laughs) though, yes. um, But, you know, he's trying to make sure that he does learn from his mistakes. And I, I just think all of that there is really interesting. And then the other thing is, I don't think anyone's mentioned, is, of course, the cave. I always forget about the cave, but it's such an important part of mm, mm. good point. Yeah, that's true. Going mm. in and just kind of facing yourself or your biggest fear <laughs> and kind of knowing that that's really all you have to fear. It's uh, it's kind of so everything the last Jedi wanted to do this film did first and better. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 100%. And like I said, I'm one of the few people that actually likes Luke's story in The Last Jedi, the kind of broken down hero that kind of has to find a redemption path. I I find those type of stories super interesting. And that is kind of what Luke does here. Um, And then, you know, of course, everything with Vader in the end and it's it's all great. It's all absolutely fantastic. Um, So yeah, those are my thoughts. Nice. I think what I, I love, well, I think we still need punk to. Oh not. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, my bad. Jesus, Dan. No, no, no. Go ahead, Dan. I don't. I don't want you to lose your thought because if you're like me, you'll lose it real quick. So go <laughs> uh, no, no, no. no. I've, 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 I've had this thought since um, Josh started talking, so I can, I can hold on to it for a little bit longer. It's okay. Well, mine are kind of off topic from everyone else, and that is when I think about this movie, I think about Star Wars as a whole in 2021. Right, A New Hope was 70. Nine? Seven. Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven? Yeah, so yep. seventy-seven. You've got, what is that? Uh, 30, 40, I'm bad at maths. We know this from earlier. Um, over 40 years of Star Wars, and you've got a lot of canon. And you've got a lot of canon that you've thrown away when Disney bought Star Wars. But you've got 40 plus years of Star Wars. You've got the new trilogy. You've got the prequels. You've got the original thing that started it all. I think the biggest thing about this movie that I love is the fact if you watched it in 2021, you take away... Gosh, it's been so long. I can't remember. This movie came out in 1980. 80. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so we're looking at 41 years this year. Nice job. Right? But you can go... I know. I, I got that maths right. <laughs> You're look, you can look at this movie forty all, close to 41 years later and see different story elements that even add to this movie that you didn't have in 1980. And I think that's what keeps this movie and the Star Wars universe going is the fact that it, it's always evolving and it doesn't always make sense. But they're always trying to make it all mesh together and make a coherent 
story. And I guess the biggest thing for the, this movie is going back and watching it, you can think about, okay, well, here's what we know about Vader from, from Rogue One pulling into this movie through A New Hope. Or here's what we know about Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. But mm-hmm. that's the thing to me about Star Wars is that I haven't watched this movie in probably two years until tonight. And I can watch it and still find new things that are maybe being added to because of all the new stuff that's been added. And then on top of that, seeing new things that were just new to me by watching it because it's that... I don't want to seem over dramatic, but it's, it does it does have a lot of depth to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a really awesome point. It's like somebody who watched it in 1980 for the first time. It was a different experience for them than somebody who watched it in 2021 for the first time. Mm-hmm. Right. Especially exactly. if you know everything around it, you know? Yeah. And I know the prequel trilogy ruins the big reveal in this of, of Vader being Luke's father. But seriously, Vader being Luke's father is right up there with it was his sled as far as like spoilers that everyone knows. I see but, dead people. And I yeah. see dead I see dead people. It was his sled. Iron Man dying at the end of Endgame is going to be turning into that soon. I'm just saying that I know the prequels kind of ruin that reveal, but they don't ruin this film. This film no. still is very important oh, to yeah. the saga. Even if you watch them in order, if you start at episode one and go all the way to episode nine in order, it does not lessen the impact of The Empire Strikes Back. The Empire no. Strikes Back is still fantastic storytelling, even if you know the big spoiler going in. Because honestly, Luke doesn't know it's his father. He didn't watch mm-hmm. the prequels. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> even if you do, look at Luke's reaction to it. You know, that reaction is still genuine to the entirety of the story. And that part of the reveal. Now, you might not have the shock factor that that reveal came with in 1980, but that is still the actors, you know, Mark Hamill and everyone else's emotions to that moment. And you Mm -hmm. can still get that even if you watch the prequels because he, as a character, even though he's a bitch, gets, (laughs) has that feeling right in that moment and you see it. So you can still Mm -hmm. get the same similar feelings without the 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 big surprise you know yeah it lessens the impact for the audience but still doesn't lessen the impact for the character and as a whole if you decide to watch them in order it does not ruin this film because this film's very important josh mentioned the one thing i mentioned uh, i like about this film is that no one actually dies in this film but they don't win nobody wins in this movie everyone fails in some way or another even the empire yeah because the empire doesn't get luke and and they don't really destroy the rebellion they, they show at the very end of the movie that hoth was a setback but it wasn't the destruction of the rebellion i would say that even other movies that are designed to be trilogies still don't really do this middle movie right where the heroes don't win the bad guy re-cement themselves as a force to be reckoned with i haven't seen this again until infinity war when the heroes work so hard and then fail at the end. Thanos wins at the end of Infinity War. He gets all the Infinity Stones, he kills a couple of heroes, and he snaps the universe. We are spoiling every movie mm-hmm. in this episode. If you haven't yeah. seen Infinity War, <laughs> you're in a whatever. Yeah. Then you yeah. you probably yeah. don't care that much about MCU yeah. or like it being said, spoiled. So. Yeah, honestly, our target audience has seen Infinity War, The Empire Strikes Back. They've probably seen Sixth Sense. Anyways... But I'm just saying, like, I don't, I haven't, I can't think of the only two movies I think of where the bad guy wins, has this kind of outcome is Infinity War and Empire Strikes Back. I'm good. Go can, I, can I make a quick, hot, quick yeah, go hot ahead. take? Yeah, the whole reveal that Vader is Luke's father is bullshit because there's no build to it. There's no hint to it. There's no connection to it. He just says it. And that's true. Well, I remember reading about people back then, like questioning it. Like, no, no, he was just fucking with him. Yeah. Like that, he's not really. And I honestly, going back to a uh, Marvel and Infinity War, one of my favorite times in the MCU was the time period between Infinity War and the release of Endgame is how everybody had all of this l- speculation about what was going to happen. Yeah. I loved talking and discussion about the MCU in that time frame. So I can imagine that the time between the three years, not one year, between uh, this movie and Return of the Jedi, what people were talking about, because it wasn't confirmed that Vader was Luke's father until Yoda confirmed it. Was it like a third of the way into Return of the Jedi? Yeah, when he says your father, he is. And Tom, they don't really build up to it in this movie. There's no hints towards it, but there was a conversation in A New Hope where he asks Obi-Wan, what happened to my father? And 
Obi-Wan tells him that your father was a Jedi and then Vader turned against the Jedi and killed your father. And then when they get to this fight, he asks Luke, he goes, Obi-Wan never told you about your father, did he? And Luke's response is, he told me enough. He told me you killed him. That's a callback to A New Hope. Mm -hmm. In Luke's mind, even though they weren't building towards it in this movie, they were building towards it in A New Hope. Now, I know that when he wrote A New Hope, he hadn't written that yet, that Vader was Luke's father. In fact, that wasn't until he got to the second draft of this movie where he, he got that idea. But I'm just saying that that's a callback to A New Hope. So even though they're not building towards it in this movie, it's mm -hmm. still not necessarily out of left field. Well, that's but us yeah, looking it, it, back in retrograde. But yeah, Punk Punk and Wink had uh, thoughts yeah, about this. But, yeah, so, let the, go ahead. My bad. Sorry. I, I, no, you're I good. You're all good. The time. But they, you just brought something up that it makes me think about 2021, right? Everyone talks about the way the new movies were written. But if you think critically about the original trilogy, it was very similar, right? And it's amazing. Uh, just I was trying to enforce your point, Dan, that isn't it amazing that they wrote those lines not knowing what was to come, but it was a, the perfect, not a literal sense from Obi-Wan of what he said, but a uh, figurative where your father killed him. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. now it seems it's, well, now it seems it, now it actually is more powerful than it was then. The craziest part is that it fit, that they were able to write that then and make it fit so well. I, I think it also helped that they didn't know that Vader was Luke's father, but they knew that they were, I want to say related, but not like by blood, but they knew that Vader and they had Anakin to relate Skywalker, that story together. Yeah. They, yeah. they were intertwined, I should say, but I don't think at the time of a new hope that was concreted. Well, that's, but I know that they were intertwined. Yeah. And also, kind of Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 no. You, you started like before that. me. You started before me. Well, thank, well, we are very polite today. No, <laughs> the, but this is just a sign of like storytellers finding elements and building on those. Because we were talking earlier, they hadn't decided Leia and Luke would be the siblings and such, but they had the idea of twins. There were moments in Empire where it could have easily have been Han. Because Han used the lightsaber to cut open the Tauntaun and save Luke. He didn't believe in any of um, the Force in the original Star Wars, which would have been ironic, like foreshadowing. Yeah, like, also, Han's, an, Han's a very accomplished, almost Force-sensitive pilot. Exactly. So they chose which elements to use. And now, retroactively, much like we do with the prequel trilogies and the new trilogies, we look back on it's like, oh, mm -hmm. in all time. Yeah, I think they picked what they wanted yeah. and built on it. Yeah, I mean, hell, there's there's a moment in A New Hope when he asks uh, Obi-Wan, he says like, you know, when it, tell me about my father or, you know, what happened to my father. Even though Revenge of the Sith wouldn't be made for 30 years after that scene, Alec Guinness has this look on his face go, do I tell this kid that I cut off his dad's arms and legs and left him to die in lava? Hmm. I'm I'm not sure he's ready for that part of the story yet. Even though that wasn't originally how it was conceived and Alec Guinness was just a really great actor and that's why he did that. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It just feels like this, even though the, a lot of the writing for the original trilogy was not by the seat of their pants, but not... They it, left it vague and open-ended enough. Like the whole line right. about the Clone Wars just opened it up mm -hmm. you had no idea what the clone wars was it was literally you fought with my father in the clone wars just simple small lines like that are just peppered all throughout this trilogy that open up this universe to us the viewer that give us you know creative license on our own to make these stories up and continuing on they gave the actors enough creative license to expand on the characters like we got han solo saying i know you know i mean just simple stuff like that yeah. but th competent writers that weren't just wanking themselves off like oh yeah kessel run uh they were able to make it work whereas mm -hmm. now it's just almost like biblical it can't just be that han was lying about parsecs and he was he didn't know a parsec was a distance but now it's like oh but it was uh because uh black holes and watch the solo movie it's well to be fair that entire line um was justified by fans that eventually got made into canon mm -hmm. well remember fans also after the first one had luke and leia hooking up like right away so yeah but it was you know sometimes you get those fan theories that make it into the right mm -hmm. like it fills canon. the whole that was one of those writers I think don't I, see yeah wink what was that thing you were gonna say when uh I kind of cut you off about 
um, the Obi Wan talking to Luke about his dad thing. You had something to say. I don't think we heard it. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's how it always happens. So. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he'll he'll remember I'm it. Like, like, let yeah. me set up Wink right now, and I throw the pitch, and he whiffs. Yeah. Or I threw a bad I don't pitch. He I fumbles. Don't know. Well, uh, I, I didn't. I don't know if this is what you're. <laughs> If this was off of that, but I mean, just kind of thinking about the Clone Wars thing, that kind of reminded me, like, if you've ever... That's what it was. If you've ever sat and talked to, like, an old war veteran or something, and they tell you about these stories, and it's so vague, it's on the surface, you understand what they're saying, but you have no fucking idea. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, so... We do this on our podcast all the time. I hate mentioning these types of things because if you're sitting in your car listening to this podcast, you cannot do this. But I'm going to link you guys something in the chat for this. And maybe you can put it in your show notes or whatever. Go to YouTube, search Obi-Wan has PTSD. It sounds like a ridiculous thing to search, whatever. I've watched this video a thousand times. It's amazing. It's Alec Guinness and it's all of the Clone Wars. It's basically a video where... And it has nothing to do with Empire Strikes Back, so that's why I wasn't going to mention it. But it's him sitting there and this part where he's talking to Luke and telling him about his dad, which does have to do with Empire. So there you go. But that whole scene where he tells Luke about his dad, but in between his words and his sentences is all flashbacks to all the prequels with him and Anakin. It's probably my favorite Star Wars video there is on the internet. It's from a guy that really made no videos after this one, but you should check it out. It gives you a feeling to what he must have been feeling when he's sitting there telling Luke about his dad. Oh, thank you for linking that. Yeah, I'll definitely I got you. check it out. It's Appreciate one of my it. favorite videos. It's about five minutes long, but as a Star Wars fan, mm. I can't watch it without getting emotional because my favorite character in Star Wars is Obi-Wan. And the well, everything that he taught Luke in the small time he was with him, carrying that on into Empire Strikes Back, it's amazing. Yeah. It's like I said, there's so much depth to Star Wars. That's why it's lasted for... 40 odd years, you know? Yeah. Just one last thought before we go into our out of here. I think that's why Star Wars and Star Trek are the two biggest sci-fi franchises still. Even though there's been bumps and hurdles and there's fan division with all the newest stuff and all that, there's so much deep lore in both sci-fi franchises that the fans just latch onto and they just want to see it expanded upon and they want to tell their own stories in it. And well, it's actually a Star Trek term, infinite diversity and infinite combinations. There's so much to like about Star Wars. It's like, do you like sword fights? Okay, there's sword fights. Do you like wizards? There's wizards. Do you like bounty hunters and badasses? Bounty hunters and badasses. There's smugglers. There's princesses. There's there's so much to like about those franchises. That's why I think they stand the test of time. And I think that's why they continue to grow to this day. But I think uh, we've hit all our beats. You guys want to segue Tom into the self-promos? Us? Yeah. Tom? If people want to find your podcast after listening to the podcast we took over, how could you, uh, how could they do that? Well, thank you for asking that question. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes can be listened to on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. ish. Uh, sometimes I get them out just a little bit early. I, I'm, I like what I produce. Like at midnight on Monday. No, sometimes, not always. Shut up. But please like and subscribe to us on whatever medium you choose. Uh, We always appreciate it, and it does help grow the podcast. And be sure to join our Discord channel as well. Uh, We uh, link in the episode's description on our site at firepit.podbean.com. You'll get notifications of new episodes. And even better, it's a fun time. And now, Wink and GMP are with us on the pot on the uh discord and they can join in on the conversations too if they'd like i think you might have a scroll bar now that we've joined <gasps> oh my god do we hell yeah do we, have we leveled up do we awesome oh my god. Up. no just, no no a lot of fun no, in there go check it out as soon as this episode premieres, they're going to leave, and then we're going to go back to wait, wait, a wait. scroll bar. But for 10 <laughs> minutes. How do you, well, we may, we may not have a scroll minutes. bar yet, but we are close to getting a scroll bar. Please join the Discord. Well, here's the real question. You're telling us to join the Discord. How do we join the Discord? Ooh. Oh, well, uh, there is a link, an invite on this episode's description and on our webpage at uh, firepit.podbean. Hell yeah, I'm going to go there right now and join a second time because I have fun in there. Nice. But uh, our email is also mentioned back in the interspersal segment. Um, 
that interspersal host definitely spells it out for you, literally and figuratively. So if you want to send us a uh, longer message that just wouldn't feel right sending it in Discord or on a tweet, we'll happily accept it and do something with that email. Also, like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE. Fire Pit C C E. Listen, I don't follow you. I'm going to follow you literally right now on my phone because if people don't know, they need to know. Fire Pit C C E is literally where you go. I'm doing it right now on my phone. It's that freaking easy. Do this, it will work. Love it. We will try. Come on, I'm setting you up there, Wink. All right, okay. We'll, try. well, no, no, no. Do or do not. There is no try. Beautiful, Wink. Huh? <laughs> I love it. So yeah, very important. Make sure you check them out. And while you're at it, if you're not familiar with GMP and I, you can of course check us out on all of those podcast apps. If you search Shattered Order, uh, you can find us on Twitter at Shattered Order. We're also on YouTube at Shattered Order Pod, and we stream every single week on twitch.tv slash Shattered Order. We also have a Discord. I don't remember the link to get on the Discord, though, GMP. Discord.me slash Shattered Order. Very easy. If you are a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes player that is listening to this podcast, that is where we are. If you're not, check out the game. It's really fun. We like to give big tips to all new players, so if you listen to our podcast, we can help you out. Even if you don't get the tips from the podcast, join the Discord, and there are tons of people that would love to help you out, so go ahead and do that. More people in that game means more time for us to continue the podcast, and we'd love to do it. I, I'll, I'm completely honest here. I love being on this podcast because it is something different than what we do. We, we enjoy our podcast. We have lots to say about it. But if we can go even more in depth into the Star Wars universe, we will always take that opportunity. So thank you guys. And on top of that, we have not recorded a new episode recently, but we also have a Star Wars overall podcast called chosen ones if you follow that on any of your podcast apps that's the one where we go over star wars content in general we haven't released an episode since the end of mandalorian season one but you know that's over well over a year that's it's not to say it will I never think it's happen safe to say it's dead. Well, okay so there you go it's dead but follow it anyway <laughs> But yes, we've we've done this in the past where we talk talk about Star Wars content. So we go into a show like the Fire Pit, and this is the type of content we also love to do. So there you go. Go check out all those things. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Glad to help you out on that one. But is there anyone in particular that you two would like to shout out from your own fan base, family? Well, first off, shout out to my wife for a Saturday night to come hang out with you guys when I was supposed to hang out with her. So shout out her for not being mad at me for hanging out on another podcast. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love my wife. There you go. If she's listening, which she won't be, thank you. I, I will have to give my wife a shout out too because she probably wants to kill me for podcasting two nights in a row. So thank you, sweetie. I love you. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's that, that's pretty much it. Those are some solid shout outs. Yeah, yeah, good sh- saves. Shout out to all of our C-Y-A. podcast C-Y-A. listeners who I know are going to come and listen to this podcast episode and start listening to you guys as well. And you know what? Thanks for the tips. Like we're mm-hmm. still kind of new at this. I mean, we haven't even been doing this for a full calendar year yet. So was episode fifty five not after a year? Do you guys do all, more often than a week apart? Um, so we used to release our uh, selection section episodes as a bonus episode. So oh, we have two okay. episodes a week. Almost there, man. When, mm-hmm. How but, long? Uh, we how raise, long yeah, yeah. That, that means there ha- can't be that much longer to you celebrate that one year mark. Yep. It's actually going to be April. Early April is going to be our one year mark. Yeah. It's like April, uh, April 20th. Okay, nice. oh, yeah, man. That's like weeks away. No, mm-hmm. even weeks. Actually, I think this episode is going to yeah. be come yeah, out we recall- near our one year anniversary. Yeah, it was like April it was like April 20th or something like that when we started. That's awesome. Cuz it was short. It was like the first part of April, I think. I had it on our Well, congratulations, oh, guys. You. That's awesome. And th- yeah, and uh since we're doing shout outs, like I want to give a special shout out to uh you guys. I've been a fan of your podcast for at least like 3 years or more. You guys have helped me out a lot in game. 
and you're very entertaining. You've definitely helped out on a lot of long road trips. So thank you guys for coming on to this podcast. I can't thank you enough. This has been awesome and an awesome experience for me. And uh, shout out specifically to also Tarek Thorne, not only a member here, but he is yeah, he's, uh, one of your guys, another Tarek, man. Yeah, he's a uh, very familiar. Yes, I know Tarek. Yes. Yeah, so he's uh, a wow. he's uh, also a fan of you guys and he's also a fan here. So he's one of our uh, shared fans. So I figure I give him a, a crossover. Fan. Well, nice. I give him a special shout out, too, because he does listen and he will appreciate that. <clears throat> Dan, what? Hey, yeah. what? What is this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> No, I'll uh, obviously <laughs> shout out to uh, Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Thank you so much for listening. Always thanks for the feedback. Special shout out to Rob of Rob's Custom PCs for coming on and doing the trivia with us tonight, or hosting the trivia, I should say. It was fun. I got shut out again, so uh, don't take it personally, but we're going to edit your part out. And uh, it's not going to make it into the final episode because I cannot bear my shame anymore. (laughs) As the editor, I'm going to make sure it stays in. Don't worry, Rob. Also, a special birthday shout out to my daughter. Just had a birthday last week. And I'll also shout out Wink and GMP from the Shattered Order podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. It was an absolute blast. Hear, hear. And disaster. I had And disaster. As he says in a robotic voice. Hey. I got I got one more yeah. thing to say for you for your guys. If you love this podcast, go review it, man. Because if people search Fire Pit on these podcast apps, they need to have the Fire Pit showing up number one. And the only way to do that is for you, if you love this show, to go to your podcast app of choice and leave a review telling how much you love this show. Because the more you do that, the more the Fire Pit shows up on people's lists of preferred apps for movies, for all the things that they do. Do that helps them out a ton. And I really hope you do that because I, for one, have had a massively fun time on this podcast so i know everybody out there listening to it is loving it so go go review this podcast and tell everybody how much you love it so that other people can find it and love it too listen to the guy he knows what he's talking about (laughs) their discord's got a scroll bar for a reason so (laughs) but for my shout outs again thank you guys so much for joining you this has been a blast for me too I, i love having people on to give their input on movies that we love and they love so that's fantastic for my side family members i want to shout out to my nephew connor who just got his driver's permit today. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. connor's old enough to start driving now right oh god yes I'm getting old yes he wasn't a year ago when this podcast started <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> So, again, to my family members, thank you for... I I don't think he listens to this podcast. Let's not kid ourselves. In case he does, Connor, congratulations. You're still not going to drive my car, buddy. It's not because he won't let him. It's because he physically can't. Tom's car is a piece of crap. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. It's broken. (laughs) I don't want him to die on his first driver's permit drive. I mean... I want to dispute this. I want to fight against it, but the evidence stands. <laughs> I also want to shout out, as always, to our Facebook followers, Hollywood, Slater, Bootsman, three of the many ones that have joined us. Um, again, abstaining from the full names. Thank you for popping in, spreading the word as you do, even if you don't listen to us, but just follow us on Facebook and help to spread the word. Any little bit helps. Um, thanks for joining us. And those that haven't joined us on facebook but are still following in your own little ways thanks for keeping the fire pit burning that was a, All right. that was well, a beautiful I, transition well, thank oh, you man well, thank here. You you've been All doing right. this a year you know what's going on <laughs> all right well that's uh that's it for tonight's show thanks very much again thanks for the uh shattered order guys for coming on mm-hmm. i appreciate it you guys are welcome back anytime this was an absolute yep. blast um but uh that is it for the first journey of season two are there um, any like uh sorry are there any like do we get any spoilers for what's coming up well i i i don't want i don't mean to put you on the know. spot well, no, 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 actually that's actually a beautiful is. segue because we always drop a hint before because next week we are going to have selection section number eight where we are going to review our lists leading up to our next destination film and i'm sure i'm invested now 
I'm I'm, I'm yeah. like looking for the post credit scenes. I'm I'm kind of wondering where we're leading to. What's going on here? But it won't be well, as good well, as selection section number six, the lost selection section. But yeah, we're not gonna love and we're not gonna love any softballs at you here. Yeah, we're definitely gonna want, knock it out of the park. Yeah. Though. So what you're saying is I need to come back for episode fifty six. Yes. Oh yeah, you need to come back for episode fifty six. I don't want to tip my hat too much, but yeah. All right. All right. Okay. You know, I'm hooked now. But tune in next week for a new episode. And yeah, tune into the Shattered Order whenever you can. Even if you don't play Galaxy of Heroes, just to hear a couple guys just talking about Star Wars. Talk about a game Wars. that they're passionate about and they really like. It's kind of, I don't play the game, but I listen to a couple <laughs> of your guys' episodes and it's like, I just like, you know, you guys really enjoy it. And then kind of reminds me of this podcast because it's just guys that are friends talking about something they really like and yeah. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't be listening to you guys after three years if I didn't like you. <laughs> yeah, who would, <laughs> right? <laughs> but this has been an awesome time, guys. Thank you for the memories. The <laughs> uh, way we usually do our outros is uh, we'll go like, I've been Josh, I've been Tom, and I've been Dan. Thank you for listening. So if you guys want to add a start it off, me like, I've been Wink or so on and so forth. Oh, okay, I'll start I'll it. Keep it going. I've been Dan. Not really. <laughs> Because they made me be punk. <laughs> no, I've been Dan. We've been over this a thousand times. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. I'm I'm punk. Sorry, I've been punk. And I've been Josh. I've been Dan. I've been Wink. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment LLC. Good luck out there. So why did we do that again? Uh, Because Josh is a patron of ours. Uh, Well, next time, uh, let's just give him a shout out or an autograph. That was one of the weirdest things uh, we've ever done. Why did they keep telling us their office was a hollow deck? I think they were high or drunk or something. We really need to vet these other podcasts before we agree to be guests on them. This is ridiculous. Mm, Yeah. Wait, if it was all fake, what am I doing with this?